been used inside of Syria, but we don't know how they were used, when they were used, who used them. We don't have a chain of uh, custody that establishes what exactly happened. And when I am making decisions about uh, America's national security and the potential for taking additional action uh, in response to chemical weapon use, I've got to make sure I've got the facts. If we end up rushing to judgment without hard, effective evidence, then we can find ourselves in a position where we can't mobilize the international community to support what we do. Let's do it. All right, a live look at Washington at 24 hey, past the hour. That he's was, looking pretty good. Dad, you look all right. He looks okay. <laughs> you look nice. He, sur oh he, survived, he, he, survived he survived a week without your mother. I know. Without eating anything. Without eating. <laughs> he went, after the third day, he went on a hunger strike. I, he, I, I called. I said, Dad, how are you? And he said, well... I'm on a hunger strike. And I said, are you serious? He said, I will only eat English muffins, and I don't like cooking. Okay. So she's back, yeah, and he's back. back. There's okay. something called carry-out now yeah, in America. You know, that oh, call. really? Yeah. I investigate that. You really do that. No. <laughs> Not very self-sufficient. No. Okay, what joining us now. <laughs> what a surprise. Joining a us now. Yes. <laughs> former National Security Advisor for President Carter, Dr. Zbigniew Brzezinski, who is the author of Strategic Vision, America and the Crisis of Global Power. I met a gentleman from uh, JetBlue yesterday, um, high up in the company, who says he read your book, that every sentence was like a paragraph, <laughs> and that he had to read it three times. Good. Is he trying to memorize it? <laughs> yeah. He's just trying to understand it. <laughs> of course he thought he it was is. important. <laughs> so, so, uh, so uh, talk about what you just saw, the, president, uh, the president's approach on Syria. Uh, what does he need to do moving forward? Well, I think he has to bear in mind the fact that we are watching a sectarian war, not a struggle for democracy, but a sectarian war, religious war, in a region that is volatile. And the name of the game, I think, is to preserve some degree of American influence without America becoming the chief protagonist. If we become the chief protagonist, we're going to be stuck in the region, not just in Syria longer than we have been in Iraq or in Afghanistan. So we have to keep that thing in mind. And if we can fashion something with the Russians, that's all to the good. And if we can't fashion something with the Russians, then we can support what we call the democratic opposition, which is the least influential of the groups that are engaged in the actual violence. Mm. So we keep some degree of influence. But my warning is don't plunge in on our own. No boots on the ground, no airstrikes which are sucking us in. We'll just become isolated. The world will watch. Our adversaries will rub their hands. But, I, but what about the problem that the president has raised for himself, really, by saying this was a red line? I mean, this is the classic parental problem. If you say to a child, if you do X, then that's going to be the disaster for you, and then no disaster happens. Well, I think it's better not to say such things. Right. That's how we started. You know, when the trouble... Assad must go. Yeah, Assad must go without a plan for making him go. Yeah. And now, you know, new red line. I think it's better to be a little more prudent in one's statements. <laughs> Where's he more supposed to go, by the way? More prudent in statements, well, more consequential in actions. St. Petersburg. Is, is he going to get the offer? I don't think he'll get the offer, but well, you said where he supposed he to go? go? Commit Harry Carey? Yeah, exactly. His whole family in the Alawite community? Well, he'll give probably, up? if he goes, he may go initially to the area in which the Alawis live. And it's almost like a fortress, and he has a lot of support there. But, uh, you know, ultimately, it will be decided by the balance of force. And this is a sectarian war of the Sunnis against the others. But it's a war which is spreading in the region, Sunnis against Shiites. And I don't think the United States should become a protagonist. That's the key point. That's where I start. I saw Chris's show last night and saw a CBS, po I think it was a CBS poll that showed only like 20, 25 percent of Americans ah, that think was, that Syria is America's really problem. Well, we should um, even be involved. It wasn't about war. Is it even involved? Right. Is it a responsibility of ours? 62 percent said it's not a responsibility. By the way, it's a, it's a former French colony. It's a Russian client state, a Soviet client state. Those are the countries that should be involved. And I know we've had these tragedies in Rwanda and everybody points to Rwanda. I say, I'll point to Somalia. And it, right. just because we go in doesn't mean we're not going to get thrown out. So, I think we're going then, to learn something rather interesting from all of this, namely, what are the Russians up to? 
are they prepared to be some sort of a partner with us in some parts of the world, particularly this one, or are they mostly interested in getting us involved, in getting us stuck so that we pay a huge, huge price and they indirectly benefit from it? And we'll find out. Yeah, I the think the Kerry mission the is very important. The president says he's talked to Putin about the Boston bombers, but, you know, one wonders what his conversation, the rest of the conversation. Well, was. and even that is kind of curious. Here is that bomber who the Russians come and warn us is dangerous. We don't follow up, or at least we don't take it seriously. Then a year later, he goes to Russia. He goes to the most uh, violent part of the sort of Muslim uprising in Russia, spends there six months, and comes back here. What was the Russian Secret Service doing? Yeah. They well, they have a tape. Don't they, Zabig, they have a tape of him talking to his mother along jihadist lines. Well, I'd like to see that tape. Or no, no, but never it. mind that. What happened during those six months? Right. He is in a volatile region where there are all sorts of terrorist groups operating. They don't touch him, and they let him come back, and we don't hear from them anymore. And he supposedly went over there to get his passport, his Russian yeah, passport. It's very odd. Yeah. Um, so what are the dangers mm -hmm. of the United States? Obviously, the polls show that most Americans don't think Syria is a responsibility. We've got 70, 80,000 deaths and maybe 100,000. What are the dangers of not only the United States, but the international community staying out to the rest of a very volatile region? What, 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 do, you, what do you fear could well, happen, the worst case scenario? Well, the worst case scenario would be America engaged and bogged down. Well, no, years. I'm saying but if, short of if that. America doesn't get engaged. But then I think it's going to be fought out on the ground very brutally. <laughs> and unless the international community gets together and imposes together some overwhelming pressure, probably whoever is stronger will prevail. But what about the problem for this country in the Muslim community? Do, do people then say America abandoned us in our hour of need? Well, they may. But I think if instead they're saying America is bombing us, is fighting us, America is the chief Western no, imperialist, no, no, that's worse. Thrones. That's worse. Yeah. It's not a good choice, <clears throat> but there are better choices and worse choices. The Arab League moved very quickly against Gaddafi. They have not moved against uh, Assad. Do you expect Who if hasn't? the Arab, Arab League? Oh, the Arab League. Well, the Arab League indirectly has moved. I mean, who is the sponsor of this conflict? Let's face it. It's Qatar and Saudi Arabia. Neither of them great democracies, but strongly <laughs> motivated, and particularly the Saudis, in religious terms. So Secretary Kerry is headed to Russia. He's going to be meeting with Vladimir Putin, as well as the foreign minister. Uh, you know these players and Kerry's capacity. What does he need to set up with them, and is it even is, the, is it a possibility? Well, he's got to talk Turkey to them, and he has to say to them, look, if you're not careful, this thing may bounce against you, too. After all, there are 30 million Muslims in Russia, 30 million Muslims, based on territory, with some genuine grievances against the Russians. Central Asia is becoming more volatile as we dis disengage from Afghanistan. I think he can say to the Russians, you know, you may need us. You may need us. So be helpful here. Be constructive. Maybe we can work out a deal whereby some sort of stability is contrived in uh, Syria with Assad maybe graciously given the opportunity to run, which he then declines. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> something like that. But, you know, he has to be very tough-minded in talking to the Russians because the Russians can play a double game. Mm. They can be giving us sympathy while stirring the pot. Right. Okay. All right. Stirring the pot, that, something no. your father never does when no. your mother's away. Mm -mm, he doesn't do that in the family <laughs> at all over dinner. <laughs> no. Dr. Zbigniew Brzezinski, thank you very much. Up next, brand new polling shows where the...